our next stage of motherhood is one that a lot of us don't experience. And sometimes in church, we, we kind of push them back. But I want someone to come up for a very special stage of motherhood. Jennifer, she is going to come and talk about being a mother to a special needs child. I've been practicing this for two weeks, so <laughs> deep breath. All right. I'm going to clear my eyes so I can see. <laughs> All right. As most of y'all know, I'm mama to five kids. And I was once told after my first son and daughter that there was no need to try again, that I had one of each. <laughs> uh. Well, the Lord had a different plan a plan that I believe he had in store at least five years prior. He'd prepared my heart to accept whatever he was to give me when I was told that my first child was going to be born with Down syndrome. But it wasn't in his time just yet. Uh, we had no idea what God had in store for us. My third child, Jennifer, initially spent 19 days in the NICU which is the baby's ICU. During this time, there was no hope whatsoever given that we'd ever get to even take her home. We had, well, she had several blood transfusions because her platelets kept dropping so drastically. And she was diagnosed with a type of leukemia. We were told that Jen would never walk or talk. So we called Pastor Gregory and he came to the hospital and we had Jen dedicated to the Lord there in the NICU. Sorry. The immense and immediate support we received from our loved ones is what got me through those long blurry days of going back and forth to the hospital. You can't cry too. <laughs> All right. Uh, we went every uh, visit that they allowed, which is about twice a day. I remember, I remember hearing about this time that song that states you do miracles go so great. That became my favorite song and every time I hear it, it takes me back. It can become very challenging at times. Jennifer has double the doctor's appointments that any of us in the family have. <laughs> she was offered home therapy when she was about a month old and when it was first presented, we had no idea what could be done or worked on at a month old. Uh, but very quickly, she began to show us just how strong she was she had low muscle tone and we had to use Velcro straps around her thighs to keep her legs together when she slept and when trying to teach her how to crawl. She never did crawl. She scooted on her honey. <laughs> so she did the booty scooting. <laughs> and she got really fast. <laughs> she began elementary at the age of three years. She was so tiny, she wore size 18 to 24 months clothes when she went to school. Her teachers and teacher's age just loved her and she loved her bus. To this day, she gets so excited, says, my bus, my bus, when the bus pulls up to the house. She's received occupational speech, massage therapies throughout her childhood, and she just loves to make other people smile and laugh. She becomes mama bear when she sees somebody who needs help, and she jumps into action. I believe from the very beginning, Jennifer had an advantage, and that was her older siblings, and later her, late, her younger siblings, she never wanted to get left behind, and this motivated her to develop and be so social and active. When explaining to others about Down syndrome, we tell them that this just means that Jen will have to work harder at certain things, and it would take longer to master certain tasks. She never let it hold her back, so I never put limits on her. When she wanted to play soccer and basketball, I became a coach in the church's upward sports program to push her to do her best. She began soccer at the age of five and continued playing just till this past year. I have the lovely memories of having to sprint after her <laughs> during soccer practice as I was eight months pregnant with Tiffany. <laughs> Sister Lisa tried to help a couple of times, but I was already on, on my way, so it's like I got it. <laughs> uh, with the help of her best friend's mom, we now have her in special needs cheerleading. And I tell you what, if you have never been, you need to go. There is a shift in your spirit to see so many kids that are wheelchair bound, those who struggle to even walk, 
or with other di uh, disabilities who pour their hearts into a routine and give it their all. I invite you, anytime you wanna go, you let me know. We'll get hook you up. She also loves to bowl, and she's gonna be starting on a bowling league soon. Now, my daughter has a delayed reaction to pain. She also has a super high tolerance to pain. She's like a lot of people. She doesn't like the sight of blood. When she lost her first tooth, she thought she was dying. Mm. She kept telling us, Mommy, I'm beaten. I'm beaten. Oh. And it took me to a thought, oh, but how oh. would we ever make it through puberty and the joys that it brings to the little young ladies? It's not a fun thought, but it's part of life. We made it fine. It took a lot of dedication and hard work on her big sister, Diana, in my behalf. It still sometimes presents a problem. But regarding her pain tolerance, three years ago at school, she fell and she broke her right elbow. Nobody believed it was broken because she barely cried when it happened, and she just kept it pulled close to her body and would say, no touch, it hurt. <laughs> so on the way home from the doctor's office, she literally tore the splint apart I was floored and almost in tears trying to do my best to put it back on her arm without hurting her. She had to have surgery Christmas Eve morning, and that made for a very foggy Christmas Eve for her grandmas. Just like other teenagers, she goes through the normal teenage struggles with attitude, emotional roller coaster rides, <laughs> stomping off while huffing, um. and a lot of times raising her hands saying either mm. mommy or Diana are crazy. <laughs> this makes for a lot of fun, just ask. She's very loving, as other people with Downs have explained, they just love hugs. And there are times that our love for Jennifer is possibly misinterpreted. She doesn't seem to be bothered with five long, five long minutes of a hug. Doesn't bother her a bit, but we have to try to teach her to hug, release, and move on. <laughs> so that it doesn't get uncomfortable for anybody. Our job as her family gets super hard at times, especially when folks say, oh, it's okay, and they don't mean any harm, but it contradicts what we're trying to teach her, and sometimes it's things that's, well, for her safety, that we've got to teach her. Jennifer also doesn't have a shut off when it comes to eating or feeling full. We have to run her off from the table or from the kitchen after she's eaten, otherwise she'll offer to clear everybody's plate for them. Mom. I have met, <laughs> I have met several other moms that have the same battle with their Downs children. So don't take it wrong if you happen to see us getting on to her in the gym for having served herself second or third helpings. We're not trying to be me. Jennifer also has a habit of playing with socks, especially mm. the long soccer socks. She has an orange one and a black one that are just her favorites. And she'll play with them like baby dolls. She talks to them and they play. And she And uh, one day my husband came home about 6.30 in the morning and he said, Jen's been in the kitchen eating. It too. When I asked him, how do you know? He said her socks were on the countertop. Dead giveaway. <laughs> Kids and people with Downs usually have oversized tongues, which cause speech impediments. This is something we work on daily, and I want Jennifer to feel independent. It's hard at times not to jump in and interpret what she means to say when others are having a hard time understanding. This interpreting is frowned upon by her speech therapist. It's preferred to allow Jen to be herself. She's real quick to use hand motions or other words to reiterate what she was trying to say the first time. Besides all this, there are numerous heart-swelling proud mama moments. Not enough to name them all, but I'll give you a few. Getting potty trained before the age of six was a major accomplishment. She mastered it at four and a half years old. The first time she defended her little sister Tiffany from getting picked on was huge. Her first save during the soccer ball game and then waiting for her whole team to give her high five before she would start it back up. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, her first basketball goal and seeing the whole gym go crazy was amazing. And the fact that she understands Spanish and actually speaks a few words is astounding. There have been many eye-opening moments and experiences that I have to give God the glory. And I cannot finish up with saying how very proud I am of the young lady she's become and how she has faced life head on. I don't know if she's aware at all, you know, sometimes, but we appreciate all the love that you've all shown us. Whether it be hugs, simple high fives, or just showing emotional support, thank you for loving us. And I want to say, uh, I want to say thank you. It truly takes a village. 
And with that being said, I have to give a special thank you to Diana for all the love and Diana, support she you. provides for her little sister on a daily basis. I can never thank you enough. All right.